Hello, everyone, and welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association and Jesuit Education Toral Virtual College Fair. We're very excited for you guys to be participating in this event this evening. We do have quite a few fantastic schools here with us today to talk with you. My name is Clarissa, and I'll be your facilitator this evening. Before we get started, there are just a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. There's also a Q&A button on your screen, which you can use to ask questions to our presenters at any time. If you do have a question for a specific school, be sure to mention them within your question. The session is also being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash NCCAA shortly after the event. This is also just one of many sessions happening this evening, so be sure to go back to the schedule and check out what other schools might be presenting. Now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our first institution, which is Loyola University, Maryland. Hello, my name is Michael Decker. Thank you all so much for attending today. And hopefully I can share my screen with you all so I can talk to you a little bit more about Loyola and everything that we have to offer. So if you know nothing about Loyola University or the Loyolas, you've probably heard some other ones. Loyola, Maryland, Loyola, New Orleans, Loyola, Chicago. There's a Loyola on the West Coast. St. Ignatius of Loyola founded the Jesuits. So that's where that has come from. My name is Michael Decker. I'm based in San Diego and I recruit all of our students from the West to go to school in Baltimore, Maryland. If you're wondering, or if you've never been to the East Coast before, where we're actually located, we're in the city of Baltimore. So that middle picture right there that you're seeing, that is actually the Inner Harbor. We're 15 minutes from downtown in the Inner Harbor. Students are located, students that are doing internships in the downtown area or our business students doing internships at places like Under Armour, McCormick and Schmidt. But then I have students, my political science students, for example, and my forensic students, they jump on a train and they do internships in DC. We're only an hour from DC. So they're doing internships at the Capitol Hill and the FBI. We're an hour and a half from Philly and four hours from New York by train. So if you're a theater buff like I am, you can jump on that train and get up and see some uh, theater productions. They just reopened, um, which is kind of fun and exciting on the weekends. So the other cool thing is our students, we're about 4,000 undergraduates on our campus, but there are over 120,000 students in the city of Baltimore. We call it the College Town Network. There are 14 other colleges and universities. So if we don't offer a class, we'll let you to take up to two classes at those other college campuses. So a few things when it comes to the numbers, well, even before the numbers, you see that young lady holding that Starbucks um, bag? That building right behind her is actually our admissions office and our humanities building. So if you do come in for a tour, that's going to be the building you're going to. And when it comes to kind of numbers, we're about 4,000 undergraduates. Average class size is 12 to 1. Faculty student rate, sorry, faculty student ratio is 12 to 1. Average class size is going to be about 22. So it's going to be small, intimate. You'll know your teachers. You'll know your current students. You'll have discussion-based classes, which is kind of awesome. 84% of our students live on campus all four years. So it's not a commuter campus. We have students from all over the United States and all over the world to come into our campus. And our residence halls are ranked in the top 20. So you'll be in everything from traditional uh, residence halls to suites to apartments to row homes um, your senior year. So lots of different opportunities to live on campus. And then 60% um, of our students study abroad when it's not COVID. So it's not if you're going to study abroad, it's when you're going to study abroad. We do over 40 different countries on our campus. We do have three colleges or schools on our campus. The biggest one is going to be a College of Arts and Sciences. Things like speech, language, and hearing. Pre-med, our pre-med students, biology pre-med, 73% of our students got into their first choice medical school. We also have an engineering program and there were four separate tracks. A phenomenal communications program where our students are actually um, working in a brand new studio doing productions, it's called the Greyhound Network. Or if you want to do publishing, we have a, a, one of the only universities that have a publishing company in the United States on their campus. So lots of opportunities when it comes to College of Arts and Sciences. If you're interested, interested in being a teacher, we have a phenomenal uh, School of Education. It's one of our smaller schools on our campus, but 100% of our teachers have jobs before they graduate. We have a brand new, um, it's called the Fernandez Center for Innovation and Education. 
So great new teaching spaces on our campus where you can do collaboration with other majors also. And then we have a School of Business. I know I talked to you briefly about students doing internships at places like Under Armour, McCormick and Schmidt. You could also get your MBA on our campus. And then also we have a brand new stock trade room on our campus where we have $500,000 of real money you can play with in the stock market. So lots of opportunities when it comes to our campus. We're a common app school, if you don't know about that. One application, you can apply to multiple schools. Scholarships will range anywhere from 20 to $33,000 this year. And then students will sometimes say, well, Michael, what does it take to get in? A 3.63 is our middle 50%, and we're a test optional school. So you do not have to submit your test scores. If you feel like the test scores represent who you are, definitely submit them. You can see what our middle 50% there. I could talk to you, but to, I am blue in the face about how great Loyola is, but I'd love for you to come visit our campus. You can do that virtually, just like this, where we're doing open houses virtually in November 8th, 9th, and 11th, or you can do them in person in the end of October and in the beginning of November, I think it's beginning, yeah, November 6th and 13th in person open houses too, or just come by for a tour. We even do them on Saturday. So there's lots of opportunities for you to learn more about Loyola, a Jesuit education, and just to be what it is to be a Greyhound on our campus. We are NCAA Division I. We're in the Patriot League. So if you are interested in playing sports at all, we will be a great place for you. Or if you just want to take, hang out at our FAC, our Fitness and Aquatic Center, that's where Michael Phelps trained in our Olympic size swimming pool. We have a little rock climbing wall and we have esports in there. So it's really whatever you want to do in there. I basically couldn't climb a rock climbing wall, but I'd definitely like to walk the track in there. Thank y'all so much for your time. Once again, my name is Michael Decker. And if y'all have any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I'll drop my chat, uh, my chat. I'll drop my contact information in the chat also. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation. Up next, we have St. Mary's University. I was unmuted. I mean, I was muted. Hi, everybody. Let me go ahead and awesome. Um, so St. Mary's University, first, my name is Rory de los Santos. I am the admission counselor for the Rio Grande Valley in Texas um, and most of the uh, Midwest in the US. So yeah. First thing to know about us, we're located in San Antonio, Texas. If you didn't know, San Antonio is the seventh largest city in the United States. We're pretty big, uh, rich and full, rich with uh, culture and diversity. And on some of these photos, you can see some of what we have in San Antonio. The Pearl is my favorite. We have the Alamo. Um, you can see photos of downtown and of course the Riverwalk. And San Antonians are huge Spurs fans. I think that might be a requirement to move to San Antonio, uh, but moving on. St. Mary's University at a glance. We are a four-year private Catholic Marianist liberal arts university. Uh, we are the first Catholic university in Texas in Southwestern United States. We are a Hispanic serving institute, meaning that most of the students that come to St. Mary's identify as Hispanic. Um, our total enrollment is around 3,500 and our undergraduate enrollment is around 2,300. So we are on the smaller side, but that allows for um, lots of personal connections and relationships to be made. Moving on, um, I'm gonna explain our five characteristics of a Marianist education we have here at St. Mary's. Um, this is a core of our institutional mission and we believe that it is so important um, for ourselves and our students. So first we have um, our first characteristic that is educating for formation and faith. Our second is educating in family spirit. Our third is educating for service, justice, peace and integrity of creation. Our fourth is providing an integral quality education. And our fifth is educating for adaptation and change. And we believe that by following this mission, our students experience a very unique form of education um, that is very holistic and, ex and educates your mind, spirit, and body. Moving on, um, we're gonna talk about class size. We have an average class size of 16. Um, yes, we're very small, but like I said, that allows for lots of relationships and connections to be made. I always like to tell students, um, you will know your professors and your professors will know you by your name. They will know when you're missing. They will know um, you, what's going on, and that's always a good thing. 
Um, another thing about St. Mary's, 94% of our professors hold a terminal degree. Um, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. 42% of our students on campus identify as male and 58 identify as female, which is ironic because long ago we were an all male university. We have 11 NCAA division two teams and our newest is eSports that we brought in 2020. Moving on, we're gonna talk about academic schools. Here at St. Mary's, we have three. Our first is our School of Science, Engineering and Technology. Our second is our College of Arts, Humanity and Social Sciences. And our third is our Grihi School of Business. Um, and to kind of compress this slide, if you wanna find your major and if we offer it, you can actually scan that QR code at the bottom right hand of the screen to see a massive list of all of our majors. Um, and if you can't find it on that list, let me know and I'll help you find it. Moving on to application requirements. The first thing that I wanna mention is that St. Mary's University is the first test-free college in Texas and the 70th in the country, meaning that we are not test optional, we are test-free. We will not look at your ACT or SAT scores if they are sent to us. Um, we have moved on to a more holistic review. Um, so for your application requirements, the things that you do need is your application itself and then your high school transcript. Your optional materials are your personal statement, letter of recommendation, resume, and any additional writing samples. Um, I always tell students, please send those in. That helps us know who you are better, and that's always a great thing. Um, the ways that you can apply are through our website, of course. You can apply through uh, Apply Texas, Common App, and Coalition as well. Ways to connect with us. Um, we offer on-campus tours, live guided campus tours, virtual information sessions, and phone or video chats. Um, so if you scan this QR code, it'll send you to our website where you can sign up for any of these. Um, and I will also be dropping my information in the chat um, as well as my colleague. So if you ever need anything, we will um, have our email in the chat as well. And lastly, this is our Office of Undergraduate Admission contact information, ways to stay connected with us through Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. Um, we also have our website, email, and phone number down there as well. Um, so please stay connected to us and reach out to us with any questions. Um, and of course, I will drop my info in the chat as well. I'll leave this up for just a second to take a photo of it. Thank you very much for your presentation. Up next, we have Canisius College. Of course, the screen's not sharing the right way, but we'll work with it, right? All right, everybody, thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Jeanette Delaney. I am the Senior Assistant Director for Undergraduate Admissions here at Canisius College. We are a four-year Catholic Jesuit institution located in Buffalo, New York, a city that is definitely on the rise and has gotten a lot of acknowledgement for just that. A lot of times students are a little uncertain about how to actually um, say and pronounce the name Canisius College. So it is Canisius, not Canisius. Um, we are just getting done celebrating our 150 year anniversary. Um, we are part of the Grand 27 Jesuit College Network um, and excited to be a part of that and contain that. Um, we have a phenomenal global network because of being a Jesuit institution, um, but we do find that a lot of our students are coming from the United States, but we do have a huge class um, coming in and out of all over 21 different countries. We border Canada, so we have a lot of Canadian international students as well. You're going to see that we have um, roughly a little bit more larger female population than male population over the last two years, and we sustain just a little under 3,000 undergraduate um, students. We do offer a buffet of graduate degree programs as well with an additional 1,000 students on campus. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about our three different schools of study. Um, we, like many of the other schools you heard from tonight, have three different schools, the Arts and Sciences, the School of Education and Human Services, and then our School of Business. Our School of Arts and Sciences hosts some of our largest, uh, is our largest, and hosts our programs such as um, biology, biochemistry, 
getting a little bit more into our digital media arts, um, the communication studies programs, as well as criminal justice um, and so forth. When we jump a little bit into the School of Education and Human Services, this is where you see the whole gamut of our education programs from childhood special education, childhood TESOL, up and through our sports management program, our health and wellness, our sports and exercise uh, program. And you'll find that even sports pedagogy for those students who aren't sure if they want to be a physical education teacher or if they know, but they know they still want to work in the world of sports and with young athletes all the way up to professional athletes. And then lastly, I have noted here our School of Business. Um, we have a lot of phenomenal accolades with our School of Business. We tend to hover around the number one accounting program on and off each year for accounting. And then our um, School of Business also hosts um, being amongst the top 20 uh, business schools throughout the Northeast. Our business programs range from business management and finance down to marketing. Um, we get a little bit more into the economic side of things as well with individual bachelor's degree programs. You'll find that part of being a Jesuit institution, what it means to us is that you're getting a lot of that hands-on experiential learning. Our students are getting engaged from being in the Buffalo area right into the community from the freshman year. Whether it's gonna be alumni coming into your classroom, speaking to you about what they're doing professionally and how they've risen through um, their profession, or if it's actually you going out and doing job shadowing, um, by freshman year, you will have some type of engagement into the major and into the workforce of what you're looking to do. We have some great pre-professional programs that complement any student's degree. Um, we actually have 15 combined degree programs. I highlight just a few of our professional degree programs on this slide here. You're gonna see that pre-law, we have an accelerated program with another local university where a student has the ability to do um, not a number of different undergraduate degrees, such as maybe English, criminal justice, political science, and then go into that fellow local university for their JD, their law school degree. And they're doing all of that in six years rather than seven. We also have some great pre-law um, placement rates. You can see our students have a 87% acceptance rate into the law schools that they choose to apply to. Switching kind of more into the health professions, we have a pre-health office on campus as well. Um, the director of the program serves on the Western New York Medical Board and was a physician herself. You'll see that our pre-law program, uh, I'm sorry, our pre-med program actually boasts with an 86% acceptance rate into medical school. Some of our students are even getting into and accepted to their medical programs as early as their freshman year with us to do an, what's called an early assurance or that combined degree program pathway. Pre-health and the pre-med path can be anything from going in for being an optometrist, a dentist, maybe it's going in to be uh, a veterinarian. Our pre-health and our pre-med is gonna work with you in any of those capacities. It's always important to have a healthy work-life balance. Um, so you'll see as our students move away from some of the phenomenal hands-on experience um, with the classroom and with our number one ranked faculty for um, Western New York, they might be complementing that work-life balance with some of our, uh, one of our 20 division one athletic sports. Um, our sports range from men's and women's basketball to lacrosse into rowing right here in the Harbor and Canal area off of Lake Erie. Um, but if you're not interested in doing a division one sport, but you want to be a fan, we have a club for you. Um, that is our big support team called the C block. Um, but you might just want to stay active with some intramurals and club sports. So we have a number of those as well available here on campus, but outside of the athletic realm, we have over 90 clubs, um, that students are engaged with some related to their majors, others that might be related to their political stance and their interests, um, that some could just be a little bit more lighthearted and fun as well. Tis the season for applying to colleges. Um, we are an early action institution. So we are a non-binding institution. We encourage all of our students um, this year to have their application in um, by December 1st. Uh, we did push that back a month this year just to be a little bit more flexible considering the constraints that families and schools have been under. So we encourage you to take advantage of the early action deadline as well as our visit opportunities um, coming up this fall. Thank you everybody for joining us. Enjoy the rest of our colleges. Thank you very much for that presentation. As a reminder for our participants, if you guys have questions for any of the institutions you are hearing from today, definitely don't hesitate to put those in the Q&A down below. Up next, we have Villanova University. Good evening, everyone. One moment while I get the slides up. 
My name is Patrick Gordet, and I serve as Villanova's regional representative for students on the West Coast, meaning I work with students that are from the Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Ocean. Had to start my clock. So Villanova University, the most distinguishing fact about us is we are the nation's one and only Catholic and Augustinian institution. The values of the Augustan order are truth, unity, and love. And using the being rooted and grounded in those values is what we use to form and foster the pluralistic environment we have on campus. We are fortunate to get students from around the country and, and internationally and, and bringing all their different backgrounds to the table, allowing us to be a stronger place uh, and home to about 6,700 undergraduates. And we recognizing that in order to make, in order that, so that Villanova can become home for each and every student that comes to us, some of the support and infrastructure we offer is academic tutoring, resources for first-generation college students, identity-affirming spaces on campus, and health from a physical and mental standpoint. In terms of our campus, uh, this photograph here on the middle right shows our suburban traditional layout, again, being medium in size. We sit about 12 miles west of downtown or center city, Philadelphia, and it's very accessible, uh, the city, the whole city being very accessible, as well as the rest of the Eastern Seaboard by public transit, as we have three different train stops on campus which allows students to get downtown in about 30 minutes. Then we are very residential in that nearly all of our first and second year students live on campus and about 65% of our juniors and seniors. We are fortunate to be classified as a national research institution. And one great thing is if you do look at that list of other schools, we are one of the smaller schools on that list as we don't have too large a graduate student population, which just means that our, our research is very accessible for those at the undergraduate level um, the projects that professors pursue, they're tending to enlist undergraduate students in those efforts. With our most recent class, a uh, statistic that supports that, with our most recent class, about 86% of students had completed at least one research experience prior to graduation. Academically, who we are, we're comprised of four different colleges with arts and sciences, business, engineering, and nursing. Know that you as a student in our application process would be applying distinctly to one of these four colleges or in some cases, to a particular major that's there. In respect to study abroad, about half our student body historically has done so, and we've been fortunate to resume some programs in Western and Central Europe this semester. In total, there are over 60 different programs that we have, and it is an option for each and every major at Villanova uh, within their four-year graduation timeline. Some of our largest majors at the school are biology, communication, psychology, finance, accounting, mechanical engineering, and nursing. Just a few there. Know that with the structure of our four colleges, it does mean that students cannot, uh, cannot double major across schools. Rather, the workaround or alternative is that students can pursue minors in other colleges. This being most common with those in arts and sciences and business where they have a bit more academic flexibility. Then student life-wise, we are fortunate to have a really strong shared social identity as a school. A lot of that being rooted in the community service we do as an institution, as well as the school spirit and athletics. Those are two areas that really all students are engaged in in some way, shape or form during their four years. In terms of community service, we are fortunate, or it's maybe one factoid, one tradition, is that Villanova does host the largest student-run Special Olympics event in the world. Then beyond those two areas of community service and athletics, there are over 260 different clubs and organizations on campus. And that's typically where you find people making their, their home, their niche, crafting their space at the school with like-minded peers. Those fall within a wide variety of areas like academic honor societies, cultural groups, religious groups, community service groups, performing arts, et cetera. Then, as it relates to our application process, we also are a common application school. We are test optional for this coming year. And if any of you are in the class, the high school class of 2023, we will have that uh, new policy or decision as to whether we will be test optional for you in this winter or spring. In our process, as mentioned before, you would be applying to one of our four colleges. We have these four different pools to apply and two different deadlines. As a private school, Majority of our students do receive aid to attend. We require the FAFSA form and CSS profile. We also maintain different merit scholarships as an office. Their full criteria and how to apply can be viewed on our website. 
one with the near deadline is the presidential scholarship whose nomination is due December 1st. Know that going forward, uh, or currently and going forward, we are able to offer in-person tours on campus. We also hope to be able to provide open house events for admitted students in the winter and spring. Or just like this and many other colleges, we have a bevy of virtual, offer virtual offerings with live presentations, campus tours, and student panels every Wednesday afternoon. Beyond that, the different social media platforms to learn about us through 24 seven. And otherwise, I'll be happy to answer any other questions you have or put you in touch with a colleague who may be responsible for your respective hometown. With that, thank you very much and thank you for attending tonight. Thank you for your presentation. Up next, we have the Turbo University. Hi, my name is Jordan Polk. Uh, I am with the Turbo University. Let me pull my screen up here real quick. So the Turbo University, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, we are located in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, this is right on the Wisconsin-Minnesota border, right next to the Mississippi River. Uh, we're about 150,000 metro, um, about 50,000 directly in the city of La Crosse. Uh, La Crosse is really uh, a unique college town. So there's three colleges or universities in town here. Um, the Turbo is a private uh, liberal arts school. So our enrollment is about 100 and Oh, no, I'm sorry, 1,500 undergrad students. Uh, so it's a smaller community, very tight knit. Um, average class size is gonna be about 16. Uh, so it's gonna be a very small, tight knit community. You know, professors are gonna know your name, you're gonna know them, you're not some number in the computer. Uh, they're the ones that teach the courses. Um, many of our professors uh, hold jobs uh, within the community also for the area they're teaching. So they've been there, done that. They speak with experience. You know, the classroom is very discussion-based and not so much lecture-based. Um, so you're really gonna have that tight-knit community while you're there, but being part of La Crosse is really nice because we are a top-ranked college town in Wisconsin. So you kind of get the best of both worlds where on campus it's gonna be small, tight-knit community, people dedicated to your education, but when you step off campus, uh, you still kind of get a big college town feel. So you really get the best of both worlds. <clears throat> we offer a number of different programs, uh, over 40 different undergrad programs. Our strongest is our nursing program. Um, about 40% of our students are part of our nursing program. Uh, we work very closely with the Mayo Health System. They are directly across the street, about 25 yards from our campus. Uh, so you'll be in the hospital working or at the clinic right away that second year or your first year in the nursing program. Uh, we do have direct admittance into the nursing program. We also have a holistic path. Uh, one thing that kind of sets our nursing program above the rest uh, is that it's, it's a four-year plan and you're going to get into the program. Uh, we've never had to wait list anybody so if you don't go direct admittance and you do go the holistic way and you get the GPA you need to that first year, um, pass the classes you need to at the BC average, uh, you're gonna get into the program. Uh, sometimes with some bigger programs, you'll run into the issue of uh, doing everything right but still getting waitlisted. Uh, to date, we have never had to waitlist anybody. Um, speaking of the uh, four-year plan is all of our problem, or all of our programs have the four-year guarantee. So that's exactly what it sounds like. It's a nice little contract. You sign your first year that says, I promise to pass all my classes and we promise to have you out of here in four years. Um, so that, that can kind of really play a big part in helping keep that total college cost down and getting out and earning money a year earlier than a lot of other programs. Um, some other big programs for us is we do have a, our music theater program is ranked top 30 in the U.S. Uh, we have a beautiful theater on campus, holds about 1,200 people. It's the largest one in Western Wisconsin. Um, so we're very proud of it. They do three shows each year, but if you enjoy theater and it's not, you're not a music, music theater major, uh, you can actually still try out for all the shows that you like. 
Um, additionally, some other strong programs we have is our, our business program. Uh, so we actually have a four plus one to get your master's, your MBA master's with us through the School of Business. Um, so that's just one additional year. Instead of graduating, turn around and applying for more schools, uh, you're going to be able to get that master's in just one additional year automatically accepted into it just by getting your bachelor's with us. Um, we do have a 100% placement rate across all programs. Uh, so not only within, uh, not only getting a job after you graduate, but you're going to get one in the field that you went to school for within six months of graduating. Uh, our pre-health program is very strong. Anything in the health sciences, you know, that kind of falls in with there with that nursing is going to be a very strong program. Uh, we actually have a 95% acceptance rate into medical programs, uh, so it's much higher than the national average. And part of that is, you know, that tight-knit community you're going to have on campus, that personalized education. A lot of times it's your professors that are going to write those letter recommendations, and that looks good. Um, but on campus, you know, when it comes time for those programs is they really look at you as a whole person, and we really give you the opportunity to be a part of many different clubs, we offer over different 80 different uh, organizations and clubs on campus to really help build that resume when looking at medical school. So again, a 95% acceptance rate in the medical schools, uh, including we have articulation agreements with six different programs across the United States. Uh, about, so jumping into athletics, uh, you know, about a third of our students are actually student athletes. Uh, we are NAIA Division III. Uh, so if you're not too familiar with the difference between NAIA and NCAA, uh, there's a couple different things, but really the big difference at the Division III level is that we can offer athletic scholarships. Um, so if you're interested, you know, reach out to us. Our coaches are always recruiting across the United States. Uh, we pull from coast to coast. Uh, we have a very competitive programs. The only sports we don't have are football and wrestling. Uh, we did add eSports as of this year, so we're excited about that. Uh, additionally, just a couple last notes here is we are um, rolling enrollment. Uh, so once you get in your application, your transcripts, we are test optional. So you don't have to turn in your test scores if you don't want to. But once we get that information, you should know within 48 hours um, of your acceptance status. Uh, everybody that's accepted receives a merit scholarship anywhere from $10,000 to $16,000. Uh, you, you receive that scholarship all four years. Um, so, and you can do that right at Paterbo.edu. So here's some additional information if you need it. Uh, if you want to take a quick picture of it, uh, any questions you have, reach out to us, admission at Paterbo.edu. Uh, the application is online and it is free. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much for that presentation. Our final institution for this session is Dominican University. Okay. Well, let me just start off by saying uh, welcome and thank you all for joining us today. Um, my name is Glenn Hamilton. I'm the Assistant Vice President for Enrollment here at Dominican. Um, <clears throat> let me tell you quickly a little bit about our location. I think it's one of the biggest selling points here at the university. Uh, Dominican is located in River Forest, Illinois, near Oak Park, uh, and just a short drive to downtown Chicago. Um, <clears throat> one of the, you know, I, I would have to say too, I'm, I'm kind of biased because I'm from Chicago boy. It is one of the world's greatest urban regions. Um, and I think being close to the city, our students utilize Chicago as an extension of the classroom, as well as offering a variety of, uh, participating in a, in a variety of activities and cultural events. Um, we like here at Dominican, like to refer to um, our location as urban suburban. The four pillars of the Cincinnati Dominican Sisters are sponsor, our prayer, study, service, and community. Uh, community is one of the pillars that we often highlight with prospective students in order, to, in order for them to understand the environment um, that they're going to be in for four years. Approximately 63% of our classes have fewer than 20 students. So you should, you know, I always tell students, you should, you're gonna have a relationship with that professor. You better show up for class and be ready and prepared uh, to be called upon. Let me tell you a little bit about, about our students. You know, we have over 3,100 students total, roughly 2,100 undergraduates. 
Um, our students are diverse. Uh, many of them are first in their family to attend college, um, but 90% come from Illinois. So we don't have that national draw. Some of these schools this evening do, um, but we are looking to draw more students from uh, a little further away and we're working on that now. But right now, most of the students come from the, the Chicago land in Illinois um, and they represent uh, over 14 nationalities. There are plenty of majors, minors, concentrations, uh, accelerated bachelor's, master's degree programs, as you heard my um, colleague from Viterbo say, a four plus one. Often sc schools are promoting these accelerated options uh, to save time and money. We also have a, a number of professional, uh, pre-professional programs here at Dominican. But on the screen, you'll see kind of a, the, the, you will see the top 10 chosen majors of our incoming freshman class. Um, you see about a third of our students overall major in science related fields, rounded out then by business and education. And we also have some unique programs in fashion design and fashion merchandising. Um, approximately 25% of our students uh, will uh, double major here at Dominican. Expect to have strong relationships, as I mentioned uh, previously, with your professors because they choose to teach at Dominican uh, because of the, the, the uh, classroom setting, uh, whether it's here in person on campus uh, or it's virtual or kind of, again, in that extended classroom in Chicago. They're going to be with you um, all the way along for each class that you have with them. We don't have graduate assistants or teaching assistants, strictly professors, and, and almost 90% have a PhD or um, the highest degree in their field. And in our student surveys, I want to point out that oftentimes the, the, the student experience with professors or that relationship with professors is rated at, at very high or at or near the, the top of the best of the students experience here at Dominican. <clears throat> We're committed to student success here. Our newest division, an entire division is set up for student success and engagement. Um, they offer a number of ways to ensure success academically and personally. Uh, some of those student services offered include faculty academic advising, which is um, not seen at every institution. Uh, there's peer mentoring and peer advising as well. So you will have a student to work with you during that first year experience, um, mentoring you through, but also talking about academics, as well as wellness support and many other academic support services that you might need to be successful in college here at Dominican. Uh, let's see. Now, you know, we know that you're going to college to, to, um, to prepare for a career, or maybe, maybe many of you might have four or five different careers after college or go to graduate school at some point after finishing here at Dominican. Uh, so as an incoming freshman, you will be introduced to a, um, a four-year career plan that includes careers and graduate uh, discussions, program discussions during the summer prior to your first year. So you already get that ball rolling before you enroll in the fall or begin classes in the fall. Um, not only do staff uh, members from our Division of Student Success and Engagement get involved with this, but professors, um, alumni, and even executives in residency, which is a, a career a group of career professionals who, who um, donate their time to work with our students here at Dominican in preparation for careers um, and, and graduate school. Here's just a quick um, you know, outcomes slide for you that talks about, that highlights some of the local uh, internship companies. Almost most of our students will have some experience with an internship. Uh, some of the majors here require internships like business and, and computer science. And a lot of those students are actually offered jobs with those companies um, upon completion of that internship. So, but, you know, being in Chicago, there are a plethora of internship settings, um, but our students will look at internships, um, in, you know, back home from where they live or in other places around the, uh, around the globe. We offer over 180 community-based learning opportunities. An example of one of these is our accounting students. Um, I know my time's about to run out, but um, this is really important to the students here at Dominican and their experience. Um, and we encourage all of our students to take at least one class where they learn uh, through providing service. 
really quickly, um, our freshmen uh, and transfer, in case we have some transfer students on this uh, call today, um, application, our, uh, applications are open. You can either apply at dom.edu or um, go ahead and um, use the Common App, both on freshmen and, for freshmen and transfers. Merit scholarships uh, will be awarded between eleven and twenty-one thousand dollars upon graduation, and um, um, an essay is required. But we do not require uh, the ACT or SAT. We are test blind for this year, and we plan on being that probably for another year or so. And if you have your phones and you want to scan this QR code, um, this is a good way for you to connect with, with um, the students here at, at Dominican. Um, you could also find, find the, this link on our website. And here's my contact information. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be on to the end of the call. Thank you so much and good luck tonight. All right, we have come to the end of our programming today. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. We also encourage you to go back out and check the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There are two more hours up next. And as I mentioned earlier, this session was recorded and you'll be able to find it and any other recordings for the tonight at strivescan.com NCCAA. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great evening.